This week on The Wire, labour numbers don't add up, millennials to exploit market trends, and Westpac joins in cutting rates. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator, managing director of Infinite Wealth, I train over 18,000 people how to uh, implement financial strategies, reach their goals, uh, things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, uh, early retirement. Uh, and I'm bringing you all the top stories happening from the week in real estate. That's what the wire stands for, the week in real estate. So before we get into the video, guys, of course, one of the things is we love to see your interaction with these posts. So please uh, like, love, angry, give us your feedback. Let us know I can hear you, all of that kind of stuff at the same time. Uh, keep in mind we have our Just Ask Tim video series every single week as well. So if you want to get your questions answered when it comes to things like money, finance, real estate, investing, all you need to do is post uh, one of your questions in the comments below or contact us through one of our our uh, social media channels and if I don't answer your question live uh, on one of our broadcasts we'll always make sure that one of our team gets back to you but right for now let's get stuck into the top three stories happening from the week in real estate this week so firstly labor numbers don't add up so you independent analysis has added qualitative proof to the claims that the Labor Party relied on incorrect assumptions in formulating its negative gearing policy I've been talking a lot about this and this is a very dangerous policy for housing it's certainly going to push rents up uh, and um, obviously it's going to severely impact the everyday Australians ability to actually get ahead in life okay so the figures from MCG quality uh, quantity surveys show Labor's assertions on the percentage of investors buying new homes were grossly understated calling into question their revenue projections it describes Labor's assessment as woefully inaccurate Pretty scathing assessment there. Shadow Treasurer Chris Bowen has suggested that new buy investors comprise anywhere between 4 and 14% of the cohort. But our figures suggest that this is punctually wrong with the number actually over 40%, says Mike Mortlock, which is the Managing Director of MCG. Labor's based much of their projected budget revenue on the premise investors will move en masse from buying existing properties to new holdings due to its negative gearing changes, he says. But our figures show investors are already buying new. So pretty scathing attack there on uh, Labor's uh, negative gearing policy. Moving into our second top story is millennials to exploit market trends. So millennials plan to invest in real estate by taking advantage of falling house prices in the biggest cities. And this comes from a survey by comparison website Finder, which indicated that 35% of Australians aged between 34 and 38 years of age believe they have something to gain from the recent price drops in those major cities. Finders say that 1.9 million Gen Ys buoyed by the prospect of a bargain. Uh, sorry, Finder, Finder says that that's 1.9 million Gen Ys buoyed by the prospect of a bargain. Kate Brown, a finance personal finance expert, says savvy millennials see the downturn in Sydney and Melbourne as an opportunity to create wealth. Smart, good opportunity for people to get into the market, okay? And there's no reasons millennials can't have their smashed avocado and eat it too, especially in this current market, she says. But being an opportunist requires planning. Boost your savings and get home loan pre, get a home loan pre-approval in place so you're ready to snap up a bargain when you see one. So very good, uh, smart thinking to think ahead, get a plan in place, start getting advice, start figuring out what you can, what you can't do, what you may need to do to get yourself in a position to actually get that loan approved. And of course, you know, particularly if you're a first home buyer, there's a lot of first home buyer grants and incentives to take advantage of in the market out there as well. Um, overall, one in five Australians, that's 19%, are interested in buying property amid recent price drops. Uh, and that is in the big cities. And this survey of over 2,000 Australians found the big city property slump has had no effect on the purchasing decision of 30% of people. So, you know, this is certainly what we're seeing with the drops in those uh, those big capital cities. People expected it to fall off a cliff. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, essentially people just need to keep with their with low unemployment, need to keep just working their job, paying their mortgage, and just write out these particular downturns, you know, as we have in every market. After a boom comes a bust. After a bust comes a boom. Okay. So, uh, you know, really smart millennials there, obviously looking to take advantage of what's happening out there. Um, and then our third top story for the week is Westpac joins banks in cutting rates. So we've seen a number of banks over the past uh, weeks and months getting super competitive when it comes to finance. They're very aggressive. They want to attract new customers out there and they're offering some amazing deals to do so. So Westpac has now joined these ranks. So Westpac has reduced interest rates on fixed rate mortgages by up to 0.2 percentage points. And that follows a recent round of similar decreases by ANZ, the Commonwealth Bank and many other small lenders. In fact, we saw Suncorp release a um, product the other day, 3.58 percent. Incredible. Um, Westpac is lowering fixed rates across three, four and five year products for owner occupiers who pay principal and interest. It is also reducing fixed rates 
for investors across two, three, and five year terms. So what we're seeing is a lot of these banks are becoming more aggressive, particularly when it comes to the investor loan space and the interest only loan space as well. The biggest cut for owner occupiers was 0.2 percentage point reduction in the four year fixed rate uh, to 4.09, which is matching CBA. For investors, the biggest cut, once again, a 0.2 percentage point reduction on its three year loan to 3.99%, once again, also matching CBA. It comes after banks are facing slower loan growth and after the increased scrutiny of banks uh, through the Banking Royal Commission that led many to slow down their approval, approval timeframes. The Westpac cuts will only apply to customers taking out a new fixed rate loan. They do not affect interest rates on variable rate loans, which are the most common type of mortgage in Australia. But you know, I've been saying this for weeks now, guys, you know, particularly if you've got an owner-occupied home loan, your interest rate should be under 4%. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. Um, so if you're not paying less than 4%, you definitely want to reach out and speak to someone at our team. Um, and once again, even with the investor interest rates, we're seeing a lot of those investor interest rates in that kind of early fours. So uh, once again, if you're not paying that, you want to be speaking to our team. So what we can do, chances are, what's going to be the best thing is switching banks, okay? They're very aggressive when it comes to new customers. But guys, that pretty much covers all the top stories happening from the week in real estate this week. Now, once again, just a reminder, we love to see your interaction. So please comment, question, like, love, angry. If you've got a question, just ask Tim. Make sure you put it down in the in the, uh, the, the comment box below. And of course, we just ask that you share this valuable information with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of it as well. But apart from that, guys, it's Thursday, the day before a four-day long weekend for Easter. I hope you guys have a great time over Easter. Please be safe, you know, spend some time with your friends and family, enjoying yourselves, and I'll look forward to speaking to you early next week. Have a great day, guys. See you later.